Good morning, options traders. Well, I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about reverse stock splits. Because when you see that happen, and it's not that often, but traders always say, well, what's going to happen to my options? And so what prompted this is that on April 9th, 2020, Chesapeake, ticker CHK, announced it's going to do a reverse stock split. And they're talking about maybe doing a one for 50 and up to possibly a one for 200 reverse split. So how does that affect your options? Well, to understand a reverse split, it helps to do a little background on a regular split. And I think most people know how they work, but they're usually done when the stock price is perceived to be too high and people just can't buy even one share of it. They're trying to invest in an IRA and they just simply can't. And so to try and increase the demand for this stock, they'll try to bring the price down. So just for simple numbers, let's say we have a $100 stock and so the company wants to bring the price down. They might announce a two for one split. And what this means is that you're going to receive two shares for every one that you own. So if you have, let's say, 100 shares trading for 100, after the split, you're going to get 200 shares trading for 50. So for a regular split, they're going to increase the number of shares and decrease the price proportionally. So notice that prior to the split, when you had 100 shares at 100, that position was worth $10,000. And after the split, it's worth $10,000. So splits don't really change anything. They're just changing the form, but not really the overall value. And that's important to keep in mind because it will help you to understand the reverse splits. So in this case, it's a little bit like getting two $50 bills in exchange for 100. It doesn't change the total amount of money that you have. So if a company announces a regular stock split, it really poses no problems for the options. Why? Well, we can always increase the number of contracts and we can decrease the strike price. Not real hard. After all, the stock price is presumed to be too high. And so if you have one $100 call trading for 10, we can very easily say it now converts to two $50 calls trading for five. You had one contract before, we made it two. If it was a five for one split, you'd have five contracts. 10 for one split, you'd have 10. We can always increase the number of the contracts, but that's not true for reverse splits. So reverse splits are done if the price is too low. Now you might say, well, what's wrong with it being too low? Well, the problem is, is that the stock might get delisted. This is, I would say in almost all of the cases, why companies announce a reverse split. So in the case of Chesapeake, it's trading for about 17 cents. And usually the NYSE listing requirements, which is where that stock is traded, is $5. So they gotta be at least above five bucks. So if they get delisted, suddenly nobody wants to buy it anymore. A lot of the institutions can't buy it. So they're trying to get that price up just to meet the listing requirements. So what a reverse split does is it's going to decrease the number of shares in the float and therefore it's going to increase the price. So instead of turning in a $100 bill and getting two fifties, like we do with a regular split, we're doing the opposite. We're turning in two fifties and getting a hundred. So we've got fewer pieces of paper, but the face value is higher. So let's say that you've got a thousand shares trading for a dollar worth a thousand bucks and the company announces a one for 10 reverse split. Now they're saying you're going to end up with one share for every 10 that you currently have. So after this reverse split, you're going to have a hundred shares, but they'll be trading for 10. So again, nothing has happened to those two positions. They're both worth a thousand dollars. But the question is what happens to your options? Because what if you only have one contract? We can't give you a tenth of a contract. So how do they handle the reverse splits for the options? Well, let's use a one for 10 reverse split and say that our stock is trading for $1. And right now you own one $5 call. So you had this call option back when the stock was, you know, maybe seven, $8, $10, whatever. And it's now taken a huge hit. It's trading for a buck. Now, the first thing to realize is that this option is severely out of the money by a factor of five to one. Stock's worth a buck, your strike is $5. 
But now the company announces a 1 for 10 reverse split. What's going to happen? Well, we can't give you a tenth of a contract. But we do know that after the split, the stock is going to be worth $10. And this is where people say, hey, this is great. My $5 call is now going to be $5 in the money. This is great. It's a huge windfall. No, it's not. Remember, stock splits do not change anything, at least in terms of the total value. What the exchanges are going to do is they're going to change the number of shares that the contract controls. So prior to the split, your call option controlled 100 shares. After the split, it's going to control one-tenth of that, or 10 shares. Now here's the other kicker. Everything else stays the same. That means your strike price stays the same, and your multiplier of 100 stays the same. See, that's not true for regular splits. But for the reverse splits, they simply change the number of shares that you control and everything else remains constant. So let's go back to the question, is your option in the money or out of the money? Well, here's an easy way to figure it out. Just step through the exercise. If you exercise your contract, you're going to receive 10 shares. But everything else stays the same. So you're going to pay $5 or $500 total because that was your strike. That doesn't change. So what's the effective price per share? Well, it's $500 that you had to pay in exchange for 10 shares. So you've paid $50 per share for stock that's trading for 10. Once again, it's a factor of five. So even though you see that stock trading for 10 and you've got the $5 call, you're going to look at your broker's platform and find out that the delta is zero and that you have zero intrinsic value. And people are going, well, how can that be? And this is why, because they simply change the number of shares that your contract controls. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab, along with a brand new candlesticks class for 2020. You can find those at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.